As transit-oriented development becomes more and more popular in North America, new public transit infrastructure have been popping up all over the place. Even in commuter suburbs where cars were the only mode of transportation possible. However, not all transit routes are created equally. Some see a large amount of riders every day, while others barely see any users even during rush hours. From small towns to big cities, successful public transit programs have been established in all kinds of built environment. This raises the question: What makes people pick transit over driving? And how does one build public transit that people will actually use? Public transit, like any other form of transportation, needs to bring people from point A to point B efficiently. So the first step to create a successful transit route is to figure out travel pattern of the potential users. To do so, transit agency will conduct surveys on different parts of the city to evaluate the transportation patterns of the residences. Transit agency would then use these data to determine what kind of service it will provide based on the travel supply and demand. For example, during morning and late afternoons, commuters often create a significant transportation demand originating from the suburbs to the downtown core. To meet their travel demand. Cities will usually implement some form of high-capacity, high-frequency services like commuter rails or express buses. However, the frequency of these services are greatly reduced during weekends and off-peak hours. Transit agencies knows that there is no significant demand during these time periods to warrant such a high-quality service. Transit routes are built based on travel supply and demand. And if there is no significant demand, there is no use for transit companies to waste money on services that very few people will actually use. But even when transit routes technically fulfill the travel demand of an area, it might still not get used very often. While transit planning is arguably the most important ingredient of good public transit, many other factors also influences transit use. When choosing a mode of transportation, people will go for the most reliable and most comfortable choice. An automobile is certainly the king of reliability and personal comfort. As such, public transit must guarantee its users a certain level of comfort and reliability for it to be worth using. Imagine a bus route that starts in front of your house and brings you directly to your workplace. The bus schedule says it's gonna arrive at 8:30, and it should only take about 20 minutes to, for the trip to your office. So you should be at your desk right about when work starts. You decide to take public transit for once to reduce your environmental footprint, but the bus arrived 15 minutes late, which in turn makes you late for work. And the next day, you are forced to drive to work because of the unreliable bus service in your city. Generally speaking, cars are more reliable than public transit. It is more likely for a bus to run late than a car to have a mechanical failure and not start. And due to the very nature of our transportation network, it is impossible for a bus to run a hundred percent on time. Some delay is always expected when it comes to public transit. While being a few minutes late is generally acceptable, for a bus to be fifteen, thirty minutes late is extremely irritating to say the least. For public transit to be considered a viable alternative to driving, transit must offer minimum delay between the advertised scheduled time and the actual arrival time of the service. To do so, city can implement dedicated bus lanes that facilitate bus travel during peak hours, or simply adjust timetable to reflect a traffic delay. The reliability of a transit service certainly plays a major role when it comes to how people choose their mode of transportation. But no one will take a bus if they can't get to the bus stop. So, in addition to transit reliability, pedestrian level of service also plays an important role at making our transit more popular. In essence, pedestrian level of service is how easily accessible a transit station is by foot. Is the transit station located on the side of a road with no way to get to the other side, or is it located close to a signalized crossing that makes it easy for pedestrians to cross? In a car-dependent urban area, the pedestrian level of service is crucial for people to consider transit an alternative to driving. If the nearest bus stop is placed on the other side of the road with no crossing opportunity, 
you're probably going to choose to drive even though the transit stop is technically really close to your house. Naturally, transit services won't get used if transit stops are impossible to reach, even if a transit station is placed close to areas with high travel demand. When designing transit networks, engineers and planners must take into consideration the nearby urban build environment and adjust it accordingly to make it welcome for transit users. In essence, transit passenger amenities is how much comfort is provided to a passenger when waiting at transit stops. Driving has always been the most comfortable mode of transportation, so transit stops also need to provide an adequate amount of comfort for its users to remain competitive as a mode of transportation. For buses, this would mean the inclusion of a bus shelter, benches, and in larger terminals, heating or air conditioning. Although sometimes expensive, these services can have a significant impact on the traveler's choice of transport. While transit planning certainly plays a significant role in how people choose their mode of transportation, engineers and planners must not forget user comfort and transit reliability when planning a future transit route. After all, no matter how good a transit route looks on paper, it is a waste of money if nobody uses it. Hey folks, thanks for watching yet another video. If you have enjoyed, please consider to leave a like and subscribe. As always, this is the Transportation Channel, and I'll see you next time.